if if you were to think about what your your life's purpose is right now would you be able to say what it is could you describe it in one sentence if the opportunity presented itself for you to operate in your purpose right now would you know how to do that Hey, hey, hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Journey to Purpose with Erica Lasan. If this is your first time ever tuning into one of my videos or my podcast, welcome. I am a joy strategist and creative consultant, and I work with women and entrepreneurs in transitional phases of life, helping them find joy, purpose, and healing in what's next. Um, I'm gonna make this very quick because my kids are sleeping and napping, but I was hit with a message that I just have to share with you guys today. I was reading my devotions and I got to Acts 8, and there's a story of Philip and the Ethiopian. The Ethiopian is a eunuch. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to try to explain it or I'm not going to try to paraphrase it. I'm just going to read it and then I'm going to tell y'all what I got from it. Hey guys, plot twist. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to preface this video that you're about to watch with a story because I realized as I was driving to meet with a friend today that is, and I'm still ruminating over the devotional message for the day, why I was so excited to share this with you all. It's because it's something that we experience all the time. So you know how sometimes you go to a place and you end up like seeing someone and you feel like you're meant to to talk to them but you don't want to or is that just me You're, or you'll get like a, a, a summoning or a whisper in your soul or in your spirit that you should go to this person and you should have a conversation and sometimes sometimes I don't know if this happens to you guys or not but sometimes you don't want to do it <laughs> you're like Lord I don't feel like talking to this person or Lord I'm just here to chill or Lord I don't know this person. What could I possibly have to say to them? And you don't go <laughs> or you do go. I don't know because most of the time I end up going because I'm mad scared of not obeying the Lord. Okay, because Lord knows every time Israel didn't pay attention to the Lord, um, some things went down. Okay, some things went down. I'm not trying to have things go down in my life. So most of the time when I have that like mustering or that summoning in my spirit, I actually do go speak to the person. And it's wild how many times that very thing conversation leads to some type of transformation or something in somebody's life. And the reason why I think that this particular scripture that I'm about to share with you guys hit me so hard was because it happened to me as recently as just this week. Sometime during this week, I took my kids to the playground and there was something that was happening with a kid and his dad. Like the dad was trying to get his kid to go with him and go home, but the kid did not want to leave the playground. And the father was getting like really upset. And he was like, whatever the kid's name is, I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave. And the kid was like, no, I don't want to leave. And the kid, the father was like, I'm leaving. And then he waited like five minutes, 10 minutes. The kid still didn't want to leave. And at this point, I think the father had had it up to here. So he was like, I'm leaving. And I mean it. And the kid was just like, okay. And then the father proceeded then to get in the car. And I'm like talking to the kid. The kid is now inside the slide. And I'm like, yo, daddy's leaving. And he's like, I don't care. It's fine. And then I then see the father turn the car, the ignition on. I like hear him. I'm like, yo, your dad is really leaving. He's turning on the car. And the kid's like, it's fine. I don't care. And then the father then proceeds to back up his car the SUV out of the parking spot. And I'm like, yo, your daddy's really leaving. Like he's he's now leaving the, the parking lot. And the kid was like, I don't care. And I'm like, what is going on with this kid that he feels so like strongly about not going home? And you know, not to like pass judgment or make assumptions about this kid's life, but obviously the kid was having a moment. And as a mom, I, I know what it's like when your child is like having a moment, but they can't fully articulate why. And so I proceeded to then go over to the slide and try to talk to this child and be like, why don't you want to go home? You know, your dad is waiting for you. And the father then gets out of the car and he begins to speak to the child again. And he's like, you know, I really need to go home. Your mom is waiting for us. Like, she's asking me why you're not home right now. And the kid is just like, he's very adamant about sticking with his guns, <laughs> saying it with his chest, and he's not going anywhere. And then at one point, I then asked the father, do you mind if I speak to him? And he was like, I'd rather you not. And then he just kept walking. At this point now, I'm like, dag, okay. And I'm making, I'm thinking a lot of things. I'm like, 
not really in my feels, but I'm like, ouch, okay, well, I guess. But then I gather my kids and I'm ready to leave because when I count to three, they know what it is. Okay. As I'm starting to leave with my children, because I'm like, Aria, Jace, it's time for us to go. And they leave what they're doing and they actually start to walk with me in the direction that I'm headed in. But then um, I got that whispering in my spirit. I, I got that whisper in my spirit that I'm supposed to talk, talk to this man. The, the man who had basically told me, F, F which hurt. <laughs> I don't want you talking to my kid. And at that moment, I kid you not, it was like, speak to him. Like, that's that's what I heard. Like, go back and talk to him. And I didn't want to do it. And I, I kid you not, I started to walk. And as I as the thought came to me, because sometimes the, the way that the spirit speaks to you, it's in a silent whisper. And when it came, when, when I heard that, I was like, I, I, I did this. I did one of these. I stopped in my tracks and I was like, Lord, I don't feel like it. I said, you ain't going to tell him what you're not going to do is tell the Lord what you will and won't do. Okay. And he gives you instructions. You got to do them. And so, um, at that point I had to then like get my mind right and obey. And so after I heard the voice again, speak to him, I was like, all right. And so I proceeded to then go back and I talked to the man and I was like, you know, I hope you don't feel any type of way. I didn't want to overstep any boundaries. And I don't want you thinking that I was trying to like tell you what to do or how to do things. And then he said, you know what? I really appreciate you saying that, but it's not even about you. Like, it's not about you. Um, and I felt really bad after I said what I said, or at least how I said it. Um, it's, it's his mom and I are having some problems. And then he proceeded to then share a little bit with me about what was going on with him in his mind, why he felt the way that he felt, and also how that, um, was playing into his relationship with his son. And at that moment, um, I gave him my card because, you know, I am a joy strategist. And I'm like, if you guys need any methods or strategies to help you guys through this phase, your girl's here. Um, but more than anything, I think it just gave him comfort to, like, acknowledge his feelings in that moment. And part of the reason why this scripture that I'm about to share with you guys is meant so much to me to receive today was because it was almost like a, an affirmation that, we are meant to be here for each other. We are meant to support each other. We are also meant to care about each other. If you see someone, um, eh, 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 you guys almost got me. You got to listen to the podcast episode and hear what scripture I'm talking about and what happens next. <laughs> Enjoy. Acts 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? Verse 31, how can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of the scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Verse 34, the eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the, that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he re reached Caesarea. All right, so I'm going to tell y'all why I'm so hyped about reading this this morning. And like, let me tell you, this morning I did not want to read my, not that I didn't want to read the Bible, but I was like dragging my feet. Like I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to read, I'm going to read. But then I got this message and when I tell you, it was like, oh, Lord, you, you've done it again. <laughs> so many joy gems, so many gems dropped. So there are a couple of things to note, right? 
The first one being that an angel of the Lord told Philip to go to an area of Jerusalem that he hadn't planned on going to. Um, and with this, it's really important to understand that Philip obeyed without really knowing, one, why he was being told to do the thing that he was doing, and two, um, he was going and he left without having a particular or set destination. Like, that's crazy for a number of reasons, but I'm going to keep going. The second thing I noted um, in this reading was that he was in a general area of where he was supposed to be and where the angel told him to go. But um, in verse 29, the spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stand near it. Like, again, still like no set destination when he left. Like, <laughs> the spirit literally told Philip, go go stand it's like basically the lord told him go stand near this car and just stand there so um the next thing that i noted was that in verse 30 where it says that philip ran so philip didn't waste any time in like carrying out the instructions that he'd been given by the spirit it says that he ran to the chariot and he heard the man reading isaiah the prophet Philip was eager to obey. He was eager to obey. He didn't waste any time. The fourth thing that I noted from this reading was that from there, he used his senses along with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to actually figure out the reason why he'd been sent to the area. Um, and with that, he was able to perceive and instinctually hop into his task. Like, he knew that the angel had sent him. He knew that the spirit wanted him to go to a general vicinity. But he didn't have any direct instructions after that point. It wasn't until he went to the chariot and he heard the eunuch reading the prophet Isaiah that he was able to hop into the task. Because the disciples and the apostles of the early church were so clear on their mission and what it was that they were supposed to be doing in spreading the gospel, um, Philip knew exactly what it was that he had to do. And so that brings me to the next thing that I noted from the scripture. He started right then without delay by speaking to what was present in the moment. And he used that as an opportunity for ministry. Now, it's not like when Philip arrived at the chariot, he was like, I gotta get my tools, I gotta have all of this, like I need to be on the ready, ready. No, he literally started with where he was and the opportunity that was presented to him. He heard the man reading the prophet Isaiah. And then he asked the man if he knew what he was reading. He asked him, he engaged in a conversation. The moment he, he did that, he was able to pick up from where he was and what was given to him, the eunuch saying, how could I know what I'm reading unless someone explains it to me? Philip was sent to be that very someone to explain to him what he was reading. That really just made me think about the fact that we don't have to make ministry hard. Or overthought in the same way that when you are thinking about your purpose and what it is that you're supposed to be doing with your life overall what is my purpose this is a question that a lot of people have but then they overthink what they should be doing in order to discover their purpose but really you don't have to discover your purpose your purpose is always present it's just a matter of you remembering who you are rediscovering who you are, reconnecting with who you are, and then committing to being in alignment with who you've been meant to be the whole time. It's a matter of owning and sharing your personal truth and your experiences, whether it be with Christ, whether it be your experience of the Holy Spirit, whether it be what, what God is doing in your life, or whether it just be like regular everyday occurrences that are happening to you, but you don't completely understand why. Understand that every part of your life, every aspect of your life, every single thing that happens in your life is done with intention. Nothing, absolutely nothing is coincidence. Seeing how Philip was just able to hop into conversation with this Ethiopian eunuch and um, deliver understanding to him where he was really asking for it in that moment. He was reading, not really knowing what he was reading, but he was desiring understanding. And, it, and because he because he was in a position to um, ask, he was also then able to receive what it was that Philip had to offer him. Um, and, and, and then really thinking about their conversation and how all of this went down, I really appreciated the fact that 
it was really a faith exchange. <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, when it comes down to it, Phillips showing up in that space and time was um, a manifestation of his faith and his trust and his belief in the angel that sent him and in listening to the Holy Spirit and where the Holy Spirit sent him and how he was being sent. And his belief of the words that had been given to him as he was a part of Jesus Christ's ministry. And then it was also a faith exchange in the eunuch believing what was being told to him and also believing the words that had been placed in front of him that he didn't have understanding of before. Sometimes when I think about um, the work that I do as a joy strategist and a creative as a creative consultant working with women and working with entrepreneurs, sometimes it can be really easy to get caught up in thinking about all the things that you think your life and your business has to be when really it's an, an exchange. It's a faith exchange. It's an energy exchange. Your purpose is a faith and energy exchange of what it is that you should be doing with your life. Um, and really, what you should be doing is sharing your message because your message is your ministry. Your message is your ministry. And your message is wrapped up in your story, <laughs> whatever your story is. And again, like I said, not, no part of your story is accident. It's really important that you, you're you willing to show up and share your message um, as it is and really when the opportunities present themselves. It doesn't have to be picture perfect. It doesn't have to be um, like perfectly filtered. It doesn't have to have the sprinkle of approval or complete understanding over it. Shoot, you yourself don't even have to completely understand why it is that you're sharing every part of your 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 experience you know but it's really important that when you feel in your heart the need to express something or share something it's really important that you do that in your business and in your life overall this brings me to the next point philip sees the opportunity that he had he sees the opportunity at hand okay like he didn't expect he didn't know who he was meant to meet along the road but he trusted that when he was placed in a certain position, he would figure it out, I assume. I don't, like, that's just how the Holy Spirit works sometimes. Philip began with the very passage of scripture that the eunuch had started with. In verse 32, it says, The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. It is so obvious. He is talking about Jesus. The prophet Isaiah is talking about Jesus. And right then, right there, hearing those words, or the words before it, <laughs> that um, the, the Ethiopian had been speaking in his chariot as he was reading, Philip knew what his task was. He knew what his task was, and he was able to pick up right there. I find this so interesting because <laughs> like all of this happened so quickly, right? Because as you're reading it, it said that the the Ethiopian eunuch then when Philip offered to explain to him what he was reading, he invited him into his chariot and they just went along on their way. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? Yo, this gets me so excited because, I mean, we all know about stranger danger, right? Like, if a car pulls up, you are not just going to hop into this person's car and go along with them wherever they're taking you. But because <laughs> Philip was so aware of what his task was, because Philip was so trusting of where the Holy Spirit had led him along with this angel, he had no qualms or no worries about just hopping, hopping into this Ethiopian's chariot and being taken with him as he was explaining the scriptures and telling him about Jesus. Like, do y'all, <laughs> like, do y'all hear this? He literally could have ended up, like, right now he's in Jerusalem. He could have ended up in Egypt somewhere for all he knew where he was going. But it didn't matter because he knew what his task was. And as they were going along the road, they wasted no time. Neither Philip nor the Ethiopian eunuch wasted any time in um, receiving receiving Christ. Like, <laughs> this is so exciting. As soon as the eunuch saw a body of water, or maybe it was, well, it couldn't have been a pitcher, maybe, because I'm sure maybe he would have had a pitcher. But as soon as he saw 
water. He said to Philip, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. I thought this was so cool because the eunuch was so eager to receive the words and the experience that Philip shared with him in that very moment. And I just thought that that was such a beautiful thing because so often you guys, like people are waiting for what it is that you have to offer. People are waiting for the message that you have to deliver. People are waiting for the experience that you, they're waiting for an experience that they have yet to receive and you could be the person to deliver it to them. Whether it be through just sharing your story, whether it be engaging in a conversation, whether it be offering them a solution through your business, whether it be you just smiling at someone on the street, you never know what it is and how it is that you will touch and impact somebody's life. And that's part of the reason why I'm so passionate about this message of, of radical joy, because you never know how just showing up as yourself authentically in your truth will change someone's life. After this experience of the Ethiopian being baptized, it said that when they came up out of the water, and this is now verse 39, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. Like y'all, <laughs> do you hear this? <laughs> I'm like I like I'm I'm picturing it as I'm saying it. That's what this pause is. But the spirit of the Lord literally just took <laughs> took Philip away. Like imagine you're standing next to someone, you get baptized, they dunk you under the water, and then you both come up out of the water and all of a sudden the person is gone. All of a sudden the person is gone. But rather than like concern or worry or fear, it says that the eunuch went along his way rejoicing. He <laughs> he was excited. He didn't really care like where Philip had went. He'd received what he needed to receive in that moment. He'd received what he needed to receive in that moment. Philip had done his job. He had fulfilled his task, period. The only reason why Philip was told to go down that road, why Philip was sent by that angel down that desert road of Jerusalem was to minister and speak to that one man, that one man that was sitting there reading and looking for an answer. And through Philip, that answer was delivered to him. Like, yo, <laughs> this gets me so hyped because that scripture that it says, ask and the, and the answer shall be given unto you, knock and the door will be open. Um, seeking that... Like, like, you guys know that verse. It's in Matthew, uh, Luke, one of the Gospels. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited right now. <laughs> if we were to think about it now in this day and age, if somebody were to be with you one second and then disappear the next, you'd be like, yo, what's going on? This is crazy. I mean, it also low-key got me thinking like, so when we consider things like this, what d does that mean that like space and time travel exists? Listen, it says that with all God, with God, all things are possible. It could be. I Look, I don't put anything past the spiritual realm. I don't put anything past God, the Holy Spirit, none of them, okay? When, ooh, oh my goodness, these are the most pretty cardinals. They're two pretty cardinals. It's like, oh my gosh, they were beautiful, just flying in sync. In that same way, Philip, after he, he'd completed his task, like he'd basically been like, I don't want to say raptured, but taken up from one place. And he was basically, he says here in verse 40, <laughs> However, Philip appeared at Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in the towns until he reached Caesarea. Philip was unfazed. <laughs> the Spirit, the Lord, was just angels were just sending him all over the place, and he was just willingly and happily just going because he knew his mission. He knew his mission. Your purpose is your mission. If, if you were to think about what your, your life's purpose is right now, would you be able to say what it is? Could you describe it in one sentence? If the opportunity presented itself for you to operate in your purpose right now, would you know how to do that? There's just so much to unpack here about living joyfully in your purpose. There's so much to unpack. So I'm just gonna share the really quick seven bullet points that I put down. The first one being stay ready and be attentive. 
Philip received sudden instructions and was willing and able to go where he was sent by the angel as well as the spirit. The second point being, be flexible. Philip was ready to go without fussing. All right, it's really important to note that. He was ready to go without fussing with the angel or the spirit. And when he was given the instruction to stand near the chariot, he didn't just like walk to the chariot, he ran. He was willing to obey and he was excited to carry out the command that was given to him. The third part of the message being, keep your spirit, eyes, ears, and heart open. Basically, keep yourself open, okay? Philip didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know where he was going at the time that he received the instruction. When the opportunity presented itself, when he heard it, he knew what it was he was supposed to be doing. And he also knew how he was supposed to carry out his task. The fourth thing that I got from this was to understand your mission, man. There is so much that comes with clarity, okay? So many people are just wallowing about their lives and their days, just going from one thing to the next, living under the expectations and the ideals of other people because they don't have clarity around their own life. They don't have clarity around their joy, what brings them joy. They don't have clarity around their purpose and they lack clarity around their mission. But that was not the case for Philip because he had clarity about his mission as a believer and as a, an apostle, an, a, a disciple of Christ and um, a member of the church, he knew what his mission was to spread the gospel. So again, if you had to describe what your life's mission purpose is, if you had to describe what your life's purpose is and you had to describe what your mission is, would you be able to do that? If not, I'm gonna need you to be still a little bit and, and, and marinate on it some. The fifth thing was to be willing to engage. Can I take a picture? Uh, <laughs> <I'm not neither. laughs> be willing to engage y'all I can't tell you how many people are afraid to talk to strangers and it really kind of makes me sad because this is the very reason that we're here we are here to engage with the, with each other we are here to connect and cultivate community we are here to help each other and serve each other and I feel like that's one thing that the I mean well the early church got many things right but that's something that they did so beautifully like they connected with each other but right now this day and age has this real messed up where we're we're like connected via the technologies but when it comes to face-to-face -face interaction we are very much lacking like i'm low-key high-key scared for the next generation that's a conversation for another day but the point here is like talk to people talk to people yes Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how you doing? They can't see you, you gotta come over here. You're too tall, here Look we go. Look at my food. There you go. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> That's my neighbor, Mr. Felton. He's so funny. You never know how your your mere presence, I don't wanna say mere presence because I don't wanna diminish it or, or like belittle it, but your purpose, your presence may be the answer to someone's prayer. Like you may have the answer that someone has been seeking. You may have the solution via your business that someone has been searching for, but you don't know if you don't talk to people. You gotta talk to people. Don't be so like stingy with your gifts. Don't be so stingy with uh, your, en well, I don't wanna say don't be stingy with your energy because that's also a conversation. You gotta protect your energy sometimes, okay? Um, and be mindful of who you share your energy with. But at the same time, y'all know until you engage with somebody. So be willing to speak with people. When we think about Philip in this situation, <laughs> the eunuch had been in his chariot reading and he'd been seeking understanding. He outright said, how will I know unless someone explains it to me? And that's exactly what Philip had been sent there to do. You gotta seize the day. This is the sixth point that I got. There's no time to waste in your purpose, in your mission, and in your ministry. As soon as the eunuch saw an opportunity to be baptized, he took it. As soon as Philip saw an opportunity to speak and, and minister and, and share the gospel, he took it, okay? He, <laughs> the eunuch had literally just come to receive an understanding of what the church of Christ was, who Christ was, the significance of the Holy Spirit, and what these scriptures he had been reading meant. He had just come to understand it, but he was still so ready and willing to receive it through the gift of baptism. And Philip was ready to share it with him. And lastly, this is the last thing that I got, y'all. Rinse, repeat, rejoice. 
Yeah, I'm not saying that I am saying it right. The eunuch wasn't surprised when Philip just disappeared. Like, it wasn't shocking to him. But instead of worrying, he rejoiced because he'd gotten the answer that he'd wanted. And Philip, <laughs> he just rinsed and repeat the same thing. Like, the spirit took him up from one place, dropped him in another place, and he just kept going about his way and his day because he knew what he had to do, no matter where it was that he was. And that's what the, the gift of understanding and knowing your purpose does for you. If you have clarity around your purpose, you're able to operate with conviction. You are able to operate with pride and, um, and being present. And that's exactly what Philip was able to do um, and, and continue to do no matter where he was. So y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I very much enjoyed sharing what I gained today um in this reading like i'm so hyped i'm so glad i read when i did i'm so happy my kids happen to be sleeping and i'm so glad that you're here to listen and receive it if you like this please um share with a friend or someone who could utilize the message to share their story like, now i'm speaking to you share your story be willing to live and speak your truth be willing to show up um without fear or hesitation for yourself but also for others and be open to serving in a way that only you can each of us has a gift all of us have purpose nobody on this earth has been placed here without purpose the question is what are you going to do with it and when are you going to start living in it and actively um, serving with it every single day if you need help figuring these things out if you need help finding what your joy is and how that joy and committing to the habit of that joy can put you on path for your purpose, please reach out to me. Please visit my site, ericalassan.com. There you will receive and you'll be able to find a bunch of tools and resources to help get you started on your journey to purpose, starting with part one the joy quest <laughs> and while you're over at the site make sure you also subscribe to our newsletter so that you don't miss any updates and future episodes of our videos as well as our podcast like this video and subscribe i look forward to speaking with you guys next sunday for another self-care sunday journey to purpose as we rediscover reconnect and recommit to your purpose and identity enjoy one feel good thing at a time Bye. <laughs>